Today on Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, we're talking about whether something is good or bad. Do you immediately jump to conclusions that something's negative or positive? Are you focused on the event in the moment instead of looking at the bigger picture? Does it seem like you're always attached to an outcome and not open to how things unfold? Learn how to recognize that initially, things may not always be what they seem. Does your clutter own you? Unclear your clutter inside and out. We'll teach you how to become aware of your clutter, along with action steps to declutter and create the life you desire. Come on, let's get started. If we are always jumping and assuming that something is good or bad, that can create mental clutter, right? Because it can create anxiety, really unnecessary. We're worrying about something and we don't even know. It's just the beginning of something. It can create a lot of emotional clutter, frustration, can create spiritual clutter because you might say, hey, this is wrong, this is bad, this shouldn't happen. And maybe it turns out being one of the best things that could have ever happened to you. It can cause tension in your relationships. If you make an assumption about how an event went and your partner makes another assumption, you know, just a lot of stuff going on there. And so I think it's really important to see how this can create clutter in your life. I am going to start off with what is the traditional Dallas teaching. And you might've seen this or read about this, I'm just going to read a shortened version, and then I'm going to share what inspired today. But this is what the Dallas say. When an old farmer's stallion wins a prize at a country show, his neighbor calls round to congratulate him. But the old farmer says, who knows what is good and what is bad? The next day, some thieves come and steal his valuable animal. His neighbor comes to commiserate with him. But the old man replies, who knows what is good and what is bad? A few days later, the spirited stallion escapes from the thieves and joins a herd of wild mares, leading them back to the farm. The neighbor calls to share the farmer's joy, but the farmer says, who knows what is good and what is bad? The following day, while trying to break in one of the mares, the farmer's son is thrown and fractures his leg. The neighbor calls to share the farmer's sorrow, but the old man's attitude remains the same as before. The following week, the army passes by, forcibly conscripting soldiers for the war, but they do not take the farmer's son because he cannot walk. The neighbor thinks to himself, who knows what is good and what is bad, and realizes that the old farmer must be a Taoist sage. I wish I was a little more on the ball because I'd have my older brother read it. He tells the story and he just has a, I really love it and puts a smile on my face when he shares a story. So I'm gonna talk a little bit, I talked a little bit because it's on my mind. My mom unexpectedly had two heart attacks and a stroke. She had a heart attack, then had a stroke, and then had another heart attack. So I'm gonna share just a few things from that. When my mom had the heart attack, I'm from West Virginia, they were in Minnesota. My father was getting his knee replaced at the Mayo, which I don't like using terms best because I think that's subjective. However, I will go on record saying that the Mayo in Rochester, Minnesota is the best hospital in the world. And I I stand by that statement. And because when my father had a really, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with him, the local hospital couldn't. He went to Pittsburgh, where the Penn's Hospital was. He went to Cleveland Clinic. No one could figure it out. He went to the Mayo. The Mayo figured out he had taken a swing, was playing golf, and cut off blood supply to his hip. Because all of a sudden, my dad's unable to walk. Anyway, didn't get treated. It wasn't diagnosed. Cut off supply, and then cut off supply to his other hip. So relatively young age, he had to get both hips replaced. So after that, my dad will only go to the Mayo for treatment. He needed his knee replaced. He had gone up. We're like, you need your knee replaced. You need your knee replaced. So, well, whatever they say. So they're like, you need your knee replaced. So we had just been at the beach on 
said bye to my parents. And I was upset because I didn't hug my mom. And Norma hugged her. She's like, oh, we got to go in. And my mom, my dad's like, me like, let's go. Let's get going. I have a long drive. Anyway, so that Friday, I get a call. My husband sees the text. I'm here where I record in my office. And, it's, and I see Tony walking in. And it's not registering because he works a swing shift. And it's 830. And he's usually still asleep. And said, your mom had a heart attack. And I was like, what are you talking about? Here's what the good news is. So my dad went and had the knee replacement because of COVID, which is not good news, quote unquote. They only kept him in the hospital one night. Normally, you would stay in the hospital two nights after knee replacement surgery, but they're obviously trying to limit exposure. If my father had stayed two nights, my mom would be dead because she would have, she wanted her to go that night at midnight. She refused finally about five or six in the morning. They called the ambulance and figured out and this is my PSA women those of you that love women get to know the symptoms of a heart attack for women because they are different than what men typically experience so hadn't been for COVID my mom would be dead so most likely I, I think too many things I'll share a few of them have had to happen so this happens Friday my brother flies up on Saturday he was scheduled to go up to help them come home after my father's knee replacement and I get a text, mom is having a stroke. So she's at, in my view, the best hospital in the world. They would, again, be at the, my dad, they'd still be in Minnesota recovering. But what I learned is that you can, and I shared this again, I apologize. I'm going a little more detail here. I just think this is so important. So what I learned is you can operate on an active stroke. And the, so they operated. They were able to remove the clot. My mom has no paralysis. You know, time is, is of the essence when you have a stroke. So the, the doctor's comment is, quote, it's practically unheard of. I have zero problem saying it's a miracle. She's at the best hospital in the world. It's practically unheard of to have an active stroke, whatever. Don't expect me to explain medical terms that this is able to happen. So then we're there. So then my brother's there for a week and then I go up and they were really great. You know, they're only supposed to allow one visitor. We snuck my dad in because they hadn't seen each other for almost two weeks. And then they switched so that I could come in and you're not supposed to let people stay over. And I get it, but they let, they made an exception. They were worried about her getting delirium because she hadn't slept because she was scared it's at night, she has a stroke, her speech is still not back, and I get that. And you need to rest to heal, right? You need to sleep to heal. So anyway, let me stay over, and I, when she'd wake up, I'm here, I'm here, it's okay. So we had really wanted to get her into the Mayo's Brain Center, because it's the best in the world, right? But the doctors ended up refusing her, and so we're literally sharing the Dallas story between all of us that I, a little version of this, and my dad sent out a link with it to remind us, you know, who knows what's good or who knows what's bad. My father's, he said, so my father thankfully had travel insurance. And if you travel a lot, consider getting travel medical insurance, especially the older you get. So I was able to see them on the med jet. They loaded them up in an ambulance, take them in a small plane with a two people on board, in addition to the pilot, pilot, I guess, RN. I don't know if he was a doctor or emergency tech or whatever. Really nice people. Really got to talk to them as we were going through the hospital and that's fascinating what they do and so I was able to ask a bunch of questions anyway so we're bummed out but we get her to to Pittsburgh which is near where my parents live well they have the same treatment basically what the Mayo said was we don't think she's strong enough because she has to do three hours of PT OT and speech therapy total a day we don't think she's strong enough for it well guess what she had to do that here yet she's closer to home so my father has been, he said, it's the longest I've ever been away from home. I mean, he's in the hotel 21 days, something, 22 days, more than that. He's able to drive to her. It's about, I think, a 90 minute drive, but he has the support of family. He has the support of friends. We have incredible support network for her. And so that was there for my father. And then, so people could, they couldn't, my father was the only one, they wouldn't let any of the kids, but they could go outside the window. So she had people cheering her on. She's making great progress. Ends up having second heart attack. My brother ends up being able to talk. So anyway, get advice. They put a defibrillator in. 
So then we end up getting, and I went to school with his cousin, which is just smallness of the world. But this guy's a really great doctor. I guess he was at Pitt and WVU. Go Mountaineers, poached him. So we ended up getting, as far as we're concerned, probably one of the top heart doctors in the area. He was going to treat her and was fabulous with her, fabulous with her. One of the things, but also, and he said, I agree with everything that this guy did. So one of the things my parents argued that they want, after the second heart attack and the fibrillator, they're like, we'll have for two weeks, we'll have 24 hour care to help her, but we want to go home. And my brother and I were like, uh, you know, is that the right decision? Because we stay, you know, they wanted her to go back to skilled nursing because she's not up to par. And just, mm -hmm. I have learned a lot about the Medicare process through this. So anyway, she's in her own bed and she's able to sleep. Friends are able to visit with mask and safely distance. There's something about being in your own bed, right? That just allows you to sleep more. And so having some time, I can say, wow, it was better for her to come home and to heal more properly. So that is just my little thing of is it good or is it bad right we've for many people coronavirus is bad maybe you lost your job but you know what maybe an even better one happens but i, I just wanted to go into a little detail about that because i think it's so important like as you see just and that's not everything in a short back and forth a good example of how we can especially at the mayo because the mayo is the best i said that and i still stand by that well we'll know if we don't get the mayo well you know what? They're doing the same thing. And she has a supportive family. Sometimes, you know, I, if you haven't listened to the interview with Sybil Rhodes, I encourage you to do that. Sybil was like a second mother to me. Sybil lived over 10 years with stage four lung cancer, never smoked, got lung cancer. I am convinced to this day because most people aren't, I think it ended up being 12 or 13 years don't survive in stage four that long. And I'm convinced one of the reasons was there were, was her, I believe her faith, her optimism, and she had a phenomenal support network. And I believe that allowed her to live extra years. So I don't doubt it's not just the medical stuff that can make a difference. She lived in Louisiana, was treated at the MD Anderson Cancer Center, but all that other stuff went into play to keeping her alive. So here are some ways to not get caught up in if something is good or is it bad. Are you always comparing yourself? How are you not honoring yourself? Do you spend time gossiping? Would you like to share your gifts with the world? Get control of your clutter so your clutter doesn't control you. Reclaim time, money, sanity, and resources. Spiritual gut clutter 365 journal prompt supports you in clearing your spiritual clutter. Free gift with purchase to support you even more in your journey to declutter your life. Try and look at the big picture and not the individual moments. Did I love my mom had a stroke and heart, two heart attacks? No. But this helped us get all the damage taken care of. First at the really groovy hospital, and this led us to the incredible heart doctor she has now. Being at the best hospital to treat an active stroke that saved her life was the better alternative than happening somewhere else. So taking that step back, and as I mentioned ago, taking a step back and saying, the better alternative was to come home. My parents were right about that, to help her rest and heal. So where in your life do you need to look at the big picture? Maybe it didn't work out with someone. I had that happen to me. But then you get over your sadness, your anger, frustration, whatever it is, and you meet the love of your life. I'm going to encourage you to acknowledge that sometimes you can't see the big picture. I'm raising my hand on this one. Multiple times in my life I haven't been able to. And that's one thing as I've gotten older, as I've done my personal growth and worked on myself, is how can I step back? I wanna step out of the situation and become neutral. I also wanna see what other higher perspective can I see in this moment? Cause I always can. not When I was lonely and tired of it not working out with someone, I was upset. But I wouldn't change any of that cause it wouldn't have led me to Tony. 
I believe all the relationships that didn't work out, I learned something from the man and it allowed me to be in the right frame of mind to welcome my husband. 20 years ago, I would have never looked at a guy that was shorter than me. No way, not happening, uh-uh. I wouldn't trade my husband the best thing that ever happened to me by far. I love this man to death. I am fortunate that he loves me even when my my crum crumjidin, crumudgeon, crumudgeon self. I wouldn't change any of it. My last job sucked because it was abusive. But because of that, that pushed me into my own business. It got me to get over my fear of speaking in public. It allowed me to write books. It allowed me to write do a podcast. It made me courageous. Did that job suck? Absolutely. For 13 months. And it gave me the kick in the pants I needed. It was so bad. I thought, eh, nothing could be worse than this. Let's go for it. If my business doesn't work out, I'll start my own. I'll just get another job. Expand your perspective. I mentioned that a moment ago. Someone else might discover something life-threatening because they got COVID. I've heard of stories, well, I got COVID and was sick and they found a lump or they found something else, right? It was that immediately, like, oh my gosh. And I'm going to encourage you in the moment, especially if you think something is negative or bad, release that emotion as quickly as possible and then Try to expand your perspective because you can go down that rabbit hole and that doesn't do anything. And that's remember where the tension goes, energy flows and you don't want it focused on that bad thing. So don't immediately assume, right? You lost your job and then all of a sudden you're like, that job you applied to two years ago and didn't get comes around and you're the perfect candidate. Maybe it only gets you to admit that you're not in a good relationship, right? All this stuff's coming out and you think, wow, hmm. Maybe this isn't the right relationship for me. So try to expand your perspective. Don't get attached to the outcome. I have a lot of challenges with this. I am much better the more I have relaxed and gotten in flow and not try to control every step of the way, the better I do with this. We all get tripped up here from time to time. Try to be in the flow of life and remember you can't always see anything because there might be something better don't get attached to the outcome right look back on your own life was there something that maybe was initially bad but then six months later you're like wow mm -mm, that ended up being good or maybe there was something good like you went on that date with that really handsome person but they ended up being really shallow. And so it ended up being bad. So take the time to look around at your own life. Where have been times that you've made the assumption and it wasn't what you thought it would be? I'd encourage you to, to do that because then you can remind yourself, okay, yeah, if I do look back on my life, there have been times where my knee jerk reaction that ended up being the opposite of what I thought. Examine your own life right now. Is there anything going on that you could say, oh, no, bad, 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 bad. Take a step back. How could it possibly be good? Take the time to contemplate. You know, I was super excited for my last job because it was a bump up in title. Pay was about the same because I was coming from Los Angeles, but I did worked independently as a contractor for 18 months, but it was a bump up in title. Ended up being the worst job of my life, right? So just take the time, look at what's going on in your life now and apply and then write down your thoughts. Understand good and bad both simply happen in life. If you can accept this, life is easier. You know, I know there was a book titled this. If you try to answer why bad things happen to good people, you'll go nuts. At least I would. It is just part of this crazy roller coaster of thing we call life. And so don't get caught up in that. And the other thing I'd say, you know, you don't know everything that everyone's done. I've seen it more than once at my age where this person's like, oh, yeah, I'm, 
I'm just great. And stuff would come out. Oh, maybe you're not so great. Maybe you're not so kind. Maybe you're kind of a bad person. So don't make all those assumptions because you don't know everything about everyone. If something bad happens to you, does that make you a bad person? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I also believe in one of the things when annoying things happen to me is just this helps me. It might not work for you. Yeah, well, I've cleared some karma. You know, that helps me just let it go a little bit easier. So don't get caught up in thinking that. And, you know, my younger brother is probably one of the luckiest people I've ever met. And I will often say to him, wow, you, you decided to coast this life and have a pretty easy life. And he still had trials and tribulation. And he's someone I would say who's had a fairly easy life as far as, as luck and things happening and angels on his shoulders all the time. But he still had his challenges. I know of no one who has had a completely easy life. What have your reactions revealed about you? When you think about it and how you react, who are you? What are you made of? Maybe you jump right into panic mode and you need to get your Zen on and that's what you learn. Maybe you jump to conclusions that it's always gonna be negative and need to learn how to be more positive. Take this as a moment to dig deeper and understand yourself better and how you can change that how you can improve upon that. Remember, we're not going for perfect. We're never going for perfect. We're going to, how can I be a better person? How can I improve my life? There is a quote from Holocaust survivor, Viktor Frankl. And this was from the book, The Man's Search for Meaning. When we've lost much, or even nearly everything, Sometimes all we can choose is our attitude in the face of trials. I was explaining that to someone who responded to my post on LinkedIn. It's a choice to be optimistic. It is a choice for you to say, how can I examine whether something's good or bad? And again, you're not going to be able to do this 100%. But the more you do something, the more that becomes your automatic response. So instead of going, <gasps> something's bad, you go, oh, let me take a moment. Let me take a deep breath. Hmm. What could possibly come out of it? How could this be good? Right? And then that becomes more of your automatic response. And then instead of going to your head, the five million thing, bad things that are going to happen as a result of that. And trust me, I used to do this all the time. I'm better. I keep improving. I do these podcasts for myself just as much for you. But again, for me, it all goes back to when you clear your clutter, you can share your gifts with the world. And I live in the world. I am part of this. And I want it to be the best possible world it can be. And as we improve ourselves, we one model this behavior to others. It allows others to step up to the plate. We shift that energy and it affects everything. Take actions from today's podcast. Look at the bigger picture when something happens. Broaden your perspective. Release expectations and outcomes. Notice what you can learn about yourself. Accept life has some good stuff and some bad stuff. Examine your own life to see where initial thoughts of good and bad have turned out differently. Be present in your life today to see how you can re-examine whether something's good or bad. Go out, clear your clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Clearing your clutter allows you to share your gifts with the world Get your free self-assessment to discover your clutter priority at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. If you've enjoyed Clear Your Clutter Inside and Out, please rate, review, and share us.